Hi, I'm Ann Edenfield Sweet, Executive Director and Founder of Wings for Life International. Today we are celebrating the life of Martin Luther King Jr. And we have a very special guest, Ken Jackson, who is going to be leading the workshop on the six philosophies of freedom and nonviolent behavior. And Ken is, well, oh my gosh. First of all, he is a motivational speaker. He is a trained, uh, what is your why instructor? He is a businessman. He is an entrepreneur. He has done a variety of things and had so many different careers over his life. And I'm proud to say that he also is on Wing staff and he is our program director. So uh, help me welcome Ken Jackson. Ken, we are happy to hear uh, everything you have to say about Martin Luther King Jr. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much, Ann. And uh, first of all, uh, I just want to say thank you. I do appreciate it. It's an honor and a privilege to uh, speak on the philosophies and talk to you a little bit tonight about the meaning of each one. So let's go ahead and uh, get started, okay? I'm really excited to, to step on this subject and, and talk to everybody about these philosophies. Now, the first thing I want to do is um, we're going to talk about character tonight. And uh, one of Dr. King's quotes is, I look to the day when people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And when I looked at this, um, character means a lot, and that's something that we're gonna touch on this evening, okay? Um, if it's possible, pen, piece of paper, because I'm gonna have you jot down some key words um, from every single one of the philosophies that we go through, and then we're gonna finish up with um, what I call a commitment. Okay, and uh, we're going to take those words and we're going to apply them to this commitment. That way you have something to uh, to take with you as we move on. Okay. All right. So first thing, let's define character. Okay. What is the definition of character? Well, a person's good reputation defines your character. The second one is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Okay, a character, your character means something, it has value. And the third, the strength and originality in a person's nature. All of these have to do with your character. Okay, now let's play a game. What are three of the hardest words to say that relate to character? Okay, and just take a minute and think about it. Three of the hardest words that you've ever had to say that may relate to character. And I'll help you out. I love you is a big one, right? Some people find that easy to say, but a lot, it's hard to say. Um, another is, uh, I need you. Um, here's another one. I need help is also hard for people to say. It has to do with your character. My fault or not my fault is something else. Three words that have to do with character. And the other one is, I am sorry. Really, really hard to say. Now, those are all just examples. But the one that I've noticed through life, through time, that I have I found that people really struggle to say is, I was wrong. Hardest thing for people to get through just to get past that. I was wrong. I made a mistake. I may have judged someone that I shouldn't have. I may have assumed some things about someone that I shouldn't have. And I've just found that saying I was wrong for people it is really hard. So let's take a deeper look into these philosophies, okay? Now, it's based on nonviolence. So what is the definition of nonviolence? Well, is the person practice of being harmless to self and others under every condition. It comes from the belief that hurting people, animals, or the environment is unnecessary to achieve an outcome. Nonviolence. See, the way I see it is that you can still have a goal and achieve that goal, and there, there can be this level of nonviolence. And that's what this description is saying right here. And I did also notice the environment that you're in. It also matters. And it has to do with your character and how you handle your environment. Also has to do with your character. So let's take a look at these philosophies. So the first one, 
Nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. It is assertive spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. So if you're taking notes right now, what I want you to write down is the word courage. Courageous, excuse me. Courageous, not deterred by danger or pain. And the reason why I want you to write this down is because it's one of the main factors within this philosophy. Now, number two, nonviolence seeks to win friendship and understanding. The purpose of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community. So if you're taking notes, two words I want you to write down. Friendship, let's define it. The emotions or conduct of friends, the state of being friends. The other word I want you to write down is understanding. This one's kind of tough for people. Understanding the ability to understand something, comprehension, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. That is something that I have worked to do in uh, every confrontation, every situation that I found myself in is seeking to understand where someone else is coming from because it, it helps with nonviolence. All right, let's go to number three. Nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice, not people. Nonviolence holds that evildoers are also victims. It's kind of strange that he'd say that, right? Evildoers are also victims. Well, the word I want you to write down out of this one is injustice. Lack of fairness or justice. We've heard the term before. We know and, and understand it. But I want you to write it down because it's going to be part of our commitment moving forward. All right, number four. Nonviolence holds that voluntary suffering can educate and transform. Accept suffering for the sake of the cause to achieve the goal. This one here is my favorite. Accept suffering for the sake of the cause to achieve the goal. Nonviolence. Now, the word I want you to write down is educate. Moral and social instruction, typically at a school or a university. Here's the thing about nonviolence in life itself. We are always and should be, in my personal opinion, educating ourselves in every way possible. Every day, we should try and learn something. So for number four, jot down, educate. The other one I want you to write down is transform. Make a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of something, right? To transform. You are someone, you were someone, and now you're becoming someone new. And we want to make sure that you understand nonviolence can be part of the new person. So transform, educate and transform. Two very powerful words within this philosophy. Number five, nonviolence chooses love instead of hate. Nonviolent love is active, not passive. Active, not passive. That means in motion. It is an action that must be taken on a regular, consistent basis to love, right? Do not be passive about it. Do unto others, as many have said, right? So the word I want you to write down is love, an intense feeling of deep affection. To love thy neighbor, to love one another, to love thyself. The other word is hate. And this is a strong word. Feel intense or passionate dislike for something or someone. And let me just make this statement. I'm not perfect. I can't stand here and say, oh, I've, I, you know, I follow nonviolence constantly and I'm never angry. And that would be completely wrong. I have these exact same feelings. So love, absolutely. Hate, yeah, it's there. It's there for everyone. And we're here tonight to see what can we do about that feeling right there. And how can we utilize that feeling, believe it or not, in a positive way. So write these two words down, love and write down hate. 
All right, number six. Nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. The nonviolent resistor has deep faith that justice will eventually win. The universe is on the side of justice. To me, that says have a deep belief. It says have a deep faith. And the last word is just win. See, with love, seeking to find justice, seeking to understand, faith will allow you to eventually win. So the word I want you to write down out of this one is justice. Definition of justice, just behavior, treatment, a concern for justice, peace, and genuine respect for people. That one right there, genuine respect for people. Take time to write that word down for me. Now, those are the six philosophies. And the one thing I want people to understand is that, as I said before, things happen. And I have anger, right? We all do. That is a feeling. That's an emotion that, that we all go through. And it sometimes leads to hate. That's, that's just the truth, and that's the fact of the matter. But sometimes we go through situations where we wonder, why me? I've asked myself that before. Why me? So I want to share a story with you because I've had to avoid hate as much as possible in some instances. A few years back, my wife and I, she was pregnant with our first, uh, first child. We were on our way home coming um, from Arizona, and we were on the I-10 freeway. It was night, roughly 8.30, 9 o'clock. And um, happy, enjoying life. It was nice out. And as we were driving on the freeway, from nowhere comes a red truck. He hits us twice. He actually tries to leave the scene. He ends up in the middle of I-10 on the freeway. The second time he hits us, we hit the concrete guardrail, slide about 35 feet, leave a mark all the way down. We finally come to a stop and I'm asking my wife, are you okay? Are you okay? She's pregnant with my first child. She says she is, but she can't open her door. He hit us so hard that the door was, was just closed. It, it, would not, it would not open. Her window was up at the time. It just so happened my window was down. The only way I could get her out of the car, I had to pull her through my window. And we were just far enough from the concrete guardrail that she could actually get through. And I sat her on the concrete. Traffic is flying past us, honking. And I'm looking over and I noticed that the guy that hit us, he actually tried to leave, but he couldn't because he hit us so hard with his truck that his wheel had actually twisted underneath. So he gets out of the truck. The first thing that falls out of the truck, bunch of beer cans all over so he's walking over and i've got to resist the feeling that i have to do what i know a lot of you feel you would have done and he comes over and as he's talking to us i notice he doesn't even speak english so what do i say to him my wife is sitting there pregnant am i angry at this time you bet i was because I did not deserve that. We were on our way home. See, I share this story because sometimes things happen that are out of your control. So what do you do? See, when he walked over, I had to restrain myself. The police weren't there. People were flying by. So do I have a right to hate? Why not? Why not? How about, what if I hated every person that drank alcohol? I got a right to. Or what if I hated every person that was the same race as the guy that almost killed me and my family? I got a right to. What if I could hate the person that actually sold him that alcohol, most likely knowing he was drunk when he sold it to him? 
because he wanted to make a buck. Got a right to. But see, what I had to understand was that I can't blame an entire race on one guy's mistake. I can't simply say that uh, I hate every person that drinks alcohol. Truth be told, I myself have been known to have a drink. Or maybe what if I, uh, what if I start with maybe not allowing certain people in the country? I don't know if he was from here. The other side of that is he didn't have insurance anyway. So what if I could, I should hate the person that sold him the car. I got a right to. See, we find things to hate. Now, the family, we're fine, blessed. My daughter, blessed, healthy. See, and I share this story because this is the way the car looked after he hit us. What did I do to deserve that? What did my family do to deserve to have some guy hit us for no reason? Absolutely nothing. We were on our way home. And that night, someone decided to make a choice and his decision affected my life permanently. See, but to me, I took the blessing of being alive. I took the blessing of being able to walk away from that situation. My family being able to walk away from that situation. So when you think that it's just you, it's not. When you get into the mode of why me and how come not them, and you start pouring on hate, think about it. Seek to understand first. Because it's not just you. Bad things don't just happen to you. You are not the only one with a hard life. You are not the only one that's had to live through something. It happens to all of us. But see, through the love, through the understanding, through patience, see, I believe we can get past that. Does this still affect me? Absolutely. But I believe that when Dr. King spoke these words and these philosophies, I believe we can all adhere to them and utilize them in our own personal lives. So let's move on. I had to make a decision. And what I decided to do was just to keep moving, to take this experience, share it with people so they can understand that they're not alone. Dr. King was not alone. His mission is bigger than all of us. So I'm just suggesting and I'm encouraging you to keep moving. Let go of the hate. It's too much to carry. It's just too much. Pick up the love, pick up the understanding and keep moving. So if you could please, the words that you wrote down, there's a commitment. And when I wrote this, um, I was trying to figure out what I could do and what I could give back as a declaration, if you will, to people. So the words that you wrote down, let's go through them. So where it says, I put your name there and we're going to start with the top and it says, I Ken Jackson will be courageous and I will pursue my passions and seek to fill in the word, understand others as I create a new friendship as I work on myself and my talents. I will seek to defeat injustice, not people. I know that I may have to endure suffering, but will continue to educate myself and others and work to transform 
and become a better person. Through my actions, I will demonstrate a love for myself and others and willingly resist hate and violence. See, th through belief and faith, I know that the universe is on the side of justice and in the end, I will win. So this is a commitment I want you to make to yourself, to your present, to your future. And it's utilizing the key words that we discovered within the six philosophies. Um, I carry this, uh, it's, it's on my phone. I, I read through it when I'm at home because I go through the same issues that you go through. What's next? And I've got to unload hate and anger as much as anybody. I'm not perfect. See, but I believe that this declaration or this commitment is something that you can utilize now and into the future. So the last quote, let us all hope that the dark clouds of racial prejudice will soon pass away and the deep fog of misunderstanding will be lifted from our fear-drenched communities. And in some not too distant tomorrow, the radiant stars of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation with all their scintillating beauty. See, I believe that we've all been blessed with gifts, with talents, that we can actually do more than what we do. We can give more than what we've given. And I believe Dr. King gave everything that he had for us, for where we are now and where we can be in the future. So I'm encouraging you today to stand up against injustice. I'm encouraging you today to have an understanding to create love within yourself and those around you. It's time that we build a brotherhood of human beings, no matter your race, no matter your religion, no matter your color, no matter where you're from, in these free United States, we should be able to come together more and do things, do things for one another more than we ever have. The future is ours. And I believe we can achieve the goal that he set out for us years ago. I appreciate your time and I encourage everybody to live free. Thank you. Fantastic job, Ken. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. was an incredible role model for all of us and will be um, for the rest of humanity. Uh, what great principles he had. Um, if you want to go to our website, you will find a placemat there. Um, and on there, it lists uh, Dr. King's six principles. It has discussion questions. And it has some things listed here for pro professional demeanor that I'd like to go over tonight. When uh, part of a group, be an active listener. Pay attention and wait your turn to respond. Give your best effort. Even if you don't succeed, keep trying. Be considerate of others, time and needs, and compromise when needed. So there you go. Just a little bit more uh, knowledge here about um, how to put into principle, uh, how to put into practice the six principles. Um, you know, I always like to close with a story, and. I thought tonight what I would do is actually close with some of his actual quotes. So I picked 10. There are just, you know, thousands and thousands of quotes that we could have found, but I found 10. So I'm going to share them with you tonight. Number one, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or perish together as fools. The time is always right to do what is right. We may have all come on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. Boy, isn't that the truth? 
Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. We must accept finite disappointments, but never lose infinite hope. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Wow, isn't that a good one? Our, li our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And the last quote I have here is, I have decided to stick to love. And this is a good quote for me too. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Wow, all very powerful words. I agree with all of them. And we have so much to learn from that incredible man. If you are with us with Facebook and YouTube, this is the end of the program. But if you are with us on Zoom, stay tuned because we're going to go immediately to a big group setting and then we'll go to breakout rooms and then we'll come back and share. We'll talk about what Ken had to share and just what all of you think about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and all of the principles that we've learned about tonight. So thanks for being with us. Now next week, we are going to have a speaker who is going to talk about, and he wrote a book about this. It's called Five Things That You Need to Know before you get sober. So thank heaven I've never had to deal with this, but we are going to learn those five things and hopefully we'll be able to help a lot of you. So thanks so much. Thanks for joining us tonight and hope to see you next week. Good night.